Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are not doing great. I'm also doing good. So today we are going to discuss another interesting topic, which is most frequently asked interview questions on Databricks and especially on the Unity catalog. I hope this is most requested uh, question by our subscribers. So in this video, I have filtered a few questions which have asked very frequently in the data Unity catalog. Okay, so let's get into the questions. So the very first question is, what is Unity catalog and how does it enhance the data governance? So Unity catalog is actually a data governance feature i mean data governance feature that can support the data governance full features like it has a many features like data security data security data lineage data sharing right data sharing security many other things right so it has lot more and also metastore catalog catalog and maintain the meta store and many other features that it has so mostly when you talk about the security uh, the very important security was it can allow you to select row or column level security so that you can restrict the user to select which particular row or column to only desired people okay so that you can do with the help of two ways one is using the cli using the sql like grant uh, grant select on the particular permission to the user or you can have the catalog explorer it's a gui okay catalog Explorer. It's a GUI. So with the help of GUI also, you can able to select which user has to access the which user role and everything. Okay. So these are the uh, features on very high level. See, explain the steps to migrate an external table from high meta store to Unity Catalog. So we can also ask the question like how you can how you can migrate the non Unity Catalog enabled table to Unity Catalog enabled table. Okay. So there are two tables are available that everyone knows. One is like managed table and external table. So in case of the external table, we need to follow certain steps. So the first step is we need to create the IAM row for the storage account. Okay. Storage account in case of Azure. Okay. That is the first step. Second step is you have to you have to take, extract the DDL from the high meta store. Okay. And you have to create a table with the help of about DDL using Unity catalog enabled version with changing the location, changing the location as above storage location. Okay. Next important thing is you have to drop the HMS DDL. HMS DDL, right? So these are the steps with the help of that you can able to convert your external uh, table or create the external table from high meta store to unity catalog so the second thing is how you can convert the internal table so in case of the internal table internal table we have a cdas command of course there are so many methods but i'll prefer this one cdas method it's just like a simple uh, selector of like create table as select from high meta store table so with the help of these methods you can able to migrate your tables from meta store to unity catalog enabled tables okay Third question is how does Unity Catalog object hierarchy model work? Okay, so first of all, we need to understand how the object hierarchy model will work. Okay, so first we can have a meta store. That's a very high level object. So on, under this, we can have a catalog. Catalog. Okay. Under this, we can have schema. Under this, we can have tables, views, and volumes, and functions. Okay. So these are all the objects will be available under this, right? So the catalog is actually a, a kind of a database, kind of a database and schema is just like a environments like test, QA, and maybe fraud location, right? So under the metadata, like how it will work is, right? So whatever the access that whoever has an access on the meta store level, they can able to have access to all other objects, even similar to catalog. If one has an access on the catalog level, they can view and change all the objects inside the schema tables and other things. So that's how the access hierarchy will work. So next question is, what are the Unity catalog key advantages over high meta store, right? High meta store can have only, high meta store can work only on one workspace level, okay? But Unity catalog, works on the region. So one in the catalog for one region so that we can work with multiple workspaces, right? So that is the one advantage. Second thing is it, it can also support the multi-cloud, multi-cloud like AWS, Azure, GCP and that, but it can restrict only to one cloud. When it comes to the scalability, scalability, Unity catalog is more scalable compared to high meta store. Okay. So next thing we have other features like data lineage, okay, uh, data sharing, okay, uh, data auditability and many other things, many other features are available compared to high meta store. 
so what are the roles and permissions are critical in unity catalog administration right so in the administration we have a few roles one is like meta store admin meta store admin so meta store admin can have access related to the metadata level like you know metadata settings like a storage access sharing policies sas tokens storage accounts and etc all those details next you can have a owners catalog owners or schema owners catalog or schema owners so these roles can have access to create or delete the objects inside this catalog or scheme so third one is auditors this is something that read only access okay only they can able to see the data uh, see the data within the, within the catalog right so they don't have any other permission so along with this we can also we can also expect so many questions on data quality and the data sharing okay and uh, cost like how this cost is going to impact and other things and one more important question on the databricks uh, that i'm hearing in nowadays is what is photon enabled based clusters photon enabled clusters right so photon enabled clusters are special type of uh, clusters and uh, these are kind of a uh, uh, vector based engines vector based engines and it has written in c++ language so what is the advantage is whenever you are executing any sort of sqls so it will use this vector based engine and this will be much faster compared to spark regular processing okay so whenever you have uh, you are working with sql sql queries or batch uh, jobs right so then we can enable this cluster you can uh, definitely get better performance compared to the regular cluster but if you have like python based code or python udf right and maybe scala udf so in this case so this cluster won't help you a lot so whenever we have a sql based workloads photon clusters will work and will execute really really fast okay so i hope uh, i hope you got some good content of this video please do like share and subscribe thank you